and then we'll start. All right. Welcome back to the PDR Coach Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have a special guest for you named Andrew Weber. Andrew and I are connected through a group masterminding called Arate. Uh, Arate is a group of business owners that hold certain ideals and are there for growth and excellence in their business. It is run by two amazing entrepreneurs that most of you have probably heard of, either one or the other, Ed Milet and Andy Frisilla. If you ever want to know information, want more information on this group, then just reach out to me and we can talk about it. I love talking about uh, the Arate group. Uh, Andrew has helped grow his family body shop in South Dakota over the years, but is always looking to add more value to the marketplace. He has an interesting idea that may help lighten the workload for many PDR companies, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Just like we talked about last week with Matt Moore, we can constantly improve, implement systems, and hire out our least favorite part of the job so we can focus on where we're most effective. And that's what we're here to talk about. So welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Hey, thank you very much for having me, man. I just wanted to uh, first and foremost just say um, I'm so grateful for for you for reaching out and for getting me on here. And then I'm just so grateful for all the value um, in these podcasts for everybody in the market. So I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. So I like to start just a little history about I think this PDR niche is this PDR is such a tiny little niche and it's most people in the world don't even know it exists. And so how did you find your way into like body shop world and then kind of into the PDR space. Absolutely. And you're, you're hundred percent right. It is a very small <laughs> thing. Like, like Don, in your interview with Kevin, like, you know, in five years, he, or Keith, in five years, he hopes that, you know, people will know that PDR is a thing. Mm -hmm. So I, um, my dad started a body shop in 1981 mm -hmm. in his garage. So I, I just grew up in the industry. Um, you know, just, this is where I've always been. So my, my first to uh, taste in PDR was just, same as most people in a body shop, you know, we had a massive hailstorm come in and these guys came in with a minivan and a bunch of tools. And all of a sudden there was no more hail dents in all these cars. And I'm looking at it like that would have taken me a week to fix. And you did it in six hours. So, I mean, from my first taste in PR, it just instantly sparked my interest in the craft and the talent that guys with, I mean, with the true talents have, you know, it's, it's almost not believable. Some of the panels that you see, I mean, even beyond the crazy dents that you guys are fixing today, but just a hail panel, you, you come in and you look at it and two hours later you come back, like what happened? Like, how is that even humanly possible? Right. So that was just kind of my first taste in PDR. So from there, obviously we, you know, we've had PDR guys come in throughout the years because we're kind of in a pretty remote area in South Dakota. So we don't get, you know, we don't have any local PDR guys and we don't have any route guys or anything like that. Um, we just bring guys in when we have hailstorms and luckily we don't get luckily and unluckily, I guess we don't get too many of those. So we just, you know, one a year or, or, or whatever the case may be. So I've just grown to be friends with a lot of the guys in the industry, you know, going through, you know, mobile tech and stuff like that. It's just been something I've, I'm more and more interested in. Um, and I've just always looked at at different ways I can be in the industry or help the industry and just where my passions are and stuff like that. So that's kind of what led me to, to where we're at right now with where I am in the industry. Yeah. So real quick, have you, you're not a PDR tech, right? You don't know. Correct. PDR. I'm not, I never, tried? I never claimed to be. <laughs> have you ever tried? Uh, no, I have never tried. I, I have lifted dents so I can get them closer to finish the paint. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you know, Push I have my, <laughs> I have my glue tools and stuff like that, but no, I have never, I have never claimed to be that the talents that you guys possess are, are a different breed. I tell you guys that. So it's, it's practice It's practice for sure. So in the body shop space, how have you, how have you helped your, so your, your parent, I'm actually in a very similar position to you and we connected over this um, in our first conversation, but dad started a business in 81. My dad started a PDR company in, in 91. And um, how have you helped them or what's been the, some of the struggles or, yeah, probably say, I guess his struggles in helping your family grow that, uh, in at uh, body shop. No, that's an, that's an awesome question. So when I first came into the body shop, you know, I start where everyone in the shop starts cleaning cars and doing windshields and, you know, just very basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as the years went on, I got out of high school and I came back to the shop and I started, you know, I was just one of the techs and then I kind of took over the paint division and stuff like that. And the biggest struggles, um, which are pretty universal str struggles, right? I bet if I ask most of your audience and most of the people that you talk to, what are the biggest three struggles? 
Um, it's going to be technicians, pricing, compensation, quality control. I mean, there's lots sure. of lots of struggles in there, but some of the top three are pretty consistently those. Mm -hmm. And us, just like anybody else, we're struggling with with technicians. Um, amplified by the fact that our nearest town with a population of over 3,000 is 70 miles away. You know, so we're in the absolute middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and while we do have an amazing community, a very safe community, very stable community, a very economically diverse community, it's still hard to bring people in that are, can be a, a quality technicians sure, that we can sure. raise yeah. into quality technicians. Yeah. So that was one of the first struggles we started to have. And I've started to kind of tackle that problem and just a lot of spinning my wheels, man, just a lot of looking in every direction. And this is kind of in the area where I found Arte and I really started to grow as a person. And I started to realize, Hey, life is so much more, man. Like life is meant to be lived for so much more than just to be work your life away. And then all of a sudden you're 60 years old and you're like, okay, well now what? Yeah. You know, so I first started to tackle that problem. Um, we brought in some, you know, I tried different things, right? I tried interns. I tried, uh, um, like, hiring technicians when they were out, out of school for the summer. I tried uh, different compensation packages. I tried like, you know, because we have a very unique draw. We're, we're a start to finish body shop. We do restoration. We do glass. You know, we, we do it all. We have no competition. So we, right. we do anything <laughs> we that do our everything. customers need. Sure. Um, and just the, the struggles that we found with keeping technicians were, were simply based on our, our location. Mm -hmm. um, it just, there wasn't enough to keep people. So that's something we've consistently, consistently struggled with. So, you know, that's a daily battle, but then thing two, um, and this is where, this is where we'll get into, yeah. you know, kind of where we're at today is one of the next biggest struggles that your retail guys that come on or your retail market and then our body shops struggle with is just the day to day tug of war with insurance companies, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. that, that topic in and of itself is a 37 week conversation, <laughs> but there's some high, high areas, some low hanging fruit out there that I started to realize like, holy smokes, like, why is nobody doing this? Um, you know, and I, so I can start doing this to help our shop, right? So our market is very diverse from other shops markets because we don't have competition. I don't have a DRP shop next door that's mm -hmm. gouging customers and doing anything like that, right? I don't have a dent masters or a dent wizards two blocks away that's sure. stealing the wholesale work, right? Sure. So, you know, we're very, we're an honest shop, we're a transparent shop and we're a very reasonable shop. We do what's right. We put the, the vehicle back to pre-accident condition, but we also get compensated for it. We're not gonna take something off our estimate because someone doesn't wanna pay it. That's just mm -hmm. not how business works. You know, you would never fix, okay, well there's 30 dents, I'll fix 10 of them and I'll do the rest for free. Like that's just not how you run a business. Right. So I started to look at low hanging fruit as far as like, okay, what do I need to do to be, to, to help this area so that we're not spending our lives handling these problems? Um, I don't have a ton of childhood memories. You know, some of them are growing up from the lake, but one of my biggest childhood memories is every night, my dad would be at the shop until nine, 10 o'clock. And it was always in the office. It was always sending emails. It was always putting things together. It was always communication and all that type of stuff, you know, like my entire childhood. And that has never changed, right? Yeah. Nights, weekends, and holidays, that's what they're doing. Shop owners, PDR techs, whatever it is. When you're not working on cars, you're working on papers, mm -hmm. right? And you can have accountants and bookkeepers and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, there's this just task that you guys have to do, right? You have to take a car from initial estimate to getting accepted for reimbursement. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Right. Least. And so leaving out exactly. And so leaving out the, the, the argument of proper reimbursement completely mm -hmm. is just the time to have to do it. Right. So that was something that I really started to look at and how to, how I can help our shop alone expedite that, I guess. Right. So mm -hmm. kind of take that to the next level, um, make it either hands off, but mostly just, just like system systematized uniform there we go yeah and uniform right because how many if you can tell me how many insurance companies there's out there i will send you a dollar because <laughs> there it's unlimited right it seems like it yeah and exactly so everyone has their own process everyone wants things done differently and that was just there's just a time drain so at the end of the day those are 
those are areas that we really started to look at how we can kind of advance advance that part of our, our daily struggle. So, yeah. So very similar to my experience in that, you know, dad started a business a long time ago, has done things the same way for a long time. That's just work until nine o'clock was just how it was done. Right. And you got a new generation that comes up that says like, let's, you know, there's a couple of ways you could say that are cliche, but like, we're, let's work smarter and not harder things like that. But you're like, okay, how can, how can I continue to run, this body shop or how can it for the guys listening to the podcast, how can I continue to run my PDR business, but make it so I can implement systems, implement processes into my business. So I'm not doing every step. I'm not doing everything from calling the insurance company to um, actually fixing the vehicle. So we have a lot of solutions in our business. I mean, we can, you know, we have apps coming out, mobile tech RX. I don't know if you're familiar with that, with that app as well, but that's helping. I love mobile tech. I love yeah. mobile tech. Okay. So we have, you know, CCC has been around for body shops for a long time. So obviously, obviously you're familiar with that. So we have some tools and so we have some ways, right? We can start to implement these things. So I guess the biggest thing is like, you know, you came in there and started solving problems. And I think um, for us, one of the biggest problems that we need to potentially solve was like, how can, if you're a solo technician, how can you only spend your time fixing dents because that's where you make the most money that's where you excel the most and so um yeah so get into your idea of how you solve that for your shop and then kind of your idea of of what you we talked about before about the ideas you have about helping other pdr companies just focus on staying in their their zone of genius as far as just fixing dents no absolutely so just to back up like half a step mm -hmm. what you said you hit it on the head like there's some people that are magicians at every single thing they do, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people like a lot of people like us, I'm included, you know, a lot of people start PDR companies or body shops because they're great at fixing cars, which yeah. is that those are the people that need to be starting these shops. Yeah. Unfortunately, they never bring in enough help or resources, you know, cause like you and I invest in Arte, right? That's a resource for us to grow our business, our personal life, our fit, like every single thing we're trying to, advance. So not enough people, unfortunately, accept that help or bring that help in. And they look at it as a cost, right? So many things in life are not, they're not a cost. It's an investment, mm -hmm. right? If I spend $10 today, but because I spent that $10 today, I'm going to make a thousand tomorrow. I mean, how many times would you like, how many $10 yeah. can I spend? Right? Yeah, right. Sure. Um, so on that, it's exactly what you said. Like, I don't know how much you like to talk about dollar figures on your show, but I'm for, you I'm guys totally have a happy dollar figure an hour. Dollar figures, talk dollars all day. What what in you like in your position? What do you like to make an hour, like per hour? If you're not setting up, like if you were pushing on a hail car, mm. and it was a complete car, what do you want to make an hour? Well, I I would say just to take it away from me me personally, I don't do a ton of hail. Yeah. I'm in Northern California, I, so my my dollar figure if I do hail is very high. Um, I would say the average, it's a big, it's a big average, but I would say between 500 and a thousand dollars build billable, right? Per hour, somewhere in 100%. that it's a, it's a, sometimes it's big number sometimes. Um, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that will, that are doing hail that can do hail for 200 bucks a push per hour too. So it's a, it's a big way, but um, yeah. That's, that's a tough, that's a tough question. Cause I'm, as I'm running it through my head, I'm like, well, I know guys that do this. And then like, I do this. And I know those guys that I just talked to a client who has been in situations where he's pushed 70 bucks an hour on hail. And we're like, you got to get out of that. That's not a sustainable business model. Right. Um, no, so no. anyways, let's just let say, me, give me your hand. Let me lead you out of that yeah. for the sake of argument. So, um, let's go 500. Which is, which is perfect. And I think to be completely honest, I think that's low. I mean, mm -hmm. I know a lot. I mean, I like think you said average, mm -hmm. but we all know guys that have done thousands an yeah, hour. Thousands, yeah, for sure. We all know it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what really started to hurt me, right? I started to see in the stuff that I was doing because I really had some personal growth like journeys over the last couple of years. And I had some, some personal experiences and just stuff because um, I work EMS as well. And I just had some really crazy experiences over the last couple of years. It made me start to realize like, life is too short to be sacrificing hours. And even if it's not dollars per hour, life is too short to be sacrificing hours ever. The only thing in life you cannot buy back is time, mm -hmm. right? So if you bring it back into the dollars per hour and stuff, it's like, if we know guys that are pushing hail or whether they're doing retail at their location and they're doing just panel damage, not just panel damage, they're doing panel damage. Mm. 
500, $800,000 an hour. How many of those 500, $800,000 an hour are being spent doing things they don't need to be doing that they could have hired for $50 an hour or $80 an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, some guys look at something like it kind of cost me $80 an hour to do. And I'm like, yeah, but you're investing $80 an hour to make a thousand. So the exact example we had a minute ago, mm -hmm. how many $80 can you spend? Yeah. Right. So that's something I really started to look at in our shop is every, every time the phone rang and it was an insurance adjuster, every time the, that we, there was another email and it was another agent, every time that happened and it was, it started to get to the point and that an, an agent would call and then an adjuster would call and then a desk auditor would call and three people would call and they'd all want the same thing. And I'm like, what is happening? Now we're at an hour and a half of my time just repeating the same thing over and over and over. And I haven't gotten anything done in the shop. And then, so then I started to look at like, I, you know, most shops billable, depending on where you're at, it's between 40 and $80 an hour. It's a big swing, but depending on where you're at, that's what a body shop, their flat rate is, is between 40 and $80 an hour. You know, and a lot of, it's pretty easy for a tech to be 200%. So in a body shop, a lot of body shop techs can be producing $250 an hour. That's without parts and whatever. Um, that's pretty crazy. Now we spent two and a half hours or two hours on the phone repeating the same thing four times and you didn't get anything else done and they're not paying you for that phone call. No. So that was one of the things I started to realize is like, why is nobody helping the shops with this? Right. It seems like everybody out there is working for the insurance company, right? The DRPs are working for the insurance companies. The big wholesale companies are working for the insurance companies. Everyone out there is on the insurance company's side and there is nobody fighting for us. There's nobody out there that's fighting for the body shops and the PDR shops, right? There's nobody out there that's like, hey, Corey that fixes dents, we're, we want to be on his side, right? They're like, no, we want to be on these billion dollar insurance company side because that's where the money's at. Sure. And while that's absolutely true, I mean, the money's on the billion dollar side. I mean, that's just cold hard math. That's just not really something I'm interested in, right? Like I just have such a passion for helping people that do similar things that I do become more efficient at it, right? And not yeah, I mean, hate their life every as night. Far, as far as number, I mean, as far as everybody in our position is on our side, but we don't, I mean, our time is limited, yeah. right? That's the, that's the problem is that we're not, we're not trying to fight a, we're not trying to look at a bigger picture. We're just like, okay, how can I get off this phone quick enough so I can get this hail car approved so I can actually start making money? Like that's the, that's the biggest thing when I'm exactly. talking to insurance companies, like, okay, what do you need for me? Right? Like I'm not going to spend the time. Sometimes I won't even spend the time to, to submit a hundred dollar supplement because I'm like the amount of time it takes me to submit the hundred dollar supplement. I could just yeah. like, I would just, I could just fix the car and just make a hundred bucks less, but it would have taken me an hour to do all the paperwork submit. And so I'm just like, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to fix the car. Right. And so that, that I, I love that. I love that you said that because <laughs> I, I love that you said that because it's like, obviously we all know that's by design, right? Like we're not trying yeah. to bad mouth any insurance <laughs> company, but we know that that's by design, right? They make sure. that process hard so that exactly what you just said happens. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope that Corey doesn't submit a supplement for a hundred dollars because it takes two hours of time. Right. And for them, a hundred dollars for every, every claim is that's a billion a year, yeah. right? So that's, that's by design. Yeah. And that's something that I'm trying to, to, that's one of my biggest passions there is just like when you said, when you're on the phone with the agent or the adjuster, mm -hmm they're not looking out for you, man. They're looking out. They're not looking out for their client. They're looking out for their bottom line. They're looking out for their job. That's and right. yeah. which is really unfortunate, right? Like if we, if we were on the same team, it would be a completely different story. Obviously mm -hmm. we're not because we all have different LLCs, right? So we're, we're all fighting for a different check at the end of the sure. day. But I just have always wanted to see more people on our side, right? More companies helping to protect us mm -hmm. and, and more, more than just us, also the customer and the client and their safety and their family safety and their financial safety, because sure. you know, we've all seen cars get completely butchered. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to trade it, they have no idea and they go to trade it in and they just get raped over the coals. Yeah, right. That's just, destroyed, yeah. it's, it's not right. Yeah. And it's happened for way too long. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just, that's something I've always just been passionate about fixing. So, so I kind of got off track of your question. Some of the things that we started, like my reason for, for doing this is exactly what you said you are worth too much an hour to be spending your time on the phone. And up to now, there isn't really anybody short of hiring an office assistant that you're going to have to train in the automotive industry and to know the knowledge. And so they don't have to come ask you questions every five minutes. There isn't really anybody out there that's said that they'll come in and say, Hey, I want to help you with this. Um, 
so that's something I started to look at. And I have a ton of friends who are um, insurance adjusters and they're great people. Mm. Um, they work for some really good companies and they're very honest and they're very open. And they say, no, we know there's nobody out there that does that because if we, if there was somebody, we would be trying to squash them, <laughs> which, which was a little concerning, but at the same time I was like, okay, so now you know, you're onto something. Yeah, exactly. Like, when, everyone when, you, tells when the you person don't do it, yeah. says that, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so that's where I got that idea. So what I started to do is I started to design a process because, you know, we're a small shop. Um, we just, there's just four of us or whatever. And I started to work on a process for, okay, where's the biggest time drain and what's the, the lowest hanging fruit to chop off the time drain. And what I noticed was exactly what we mentioned a minute ago. So let's say you have someone come in, bring in a car, um, and it's a, it's a retail job. They have insurance. It's, it's going to be PDR, no conventional. You can do everything, whether it's hail or, or panel damage. Yeah. And so you write the damage analysis, you estimate, you take your pictures, um, you do your documentation, you get all your information and the customer, you know, the customer leaves. And let's, let's not even say that there's a DRP shop or a competition. Let's say we know they're going to get, you're fixing the car. Mm. They want you to fix the car. You're going to fix the car. So what happens is you write the damage analysis and you take the pictures and, and then what? Then what happens, right? You got to call this guy or you got to email this guy or you got to need a claim number or need to submit it here or you need to call the agent or you need to call the adjuster. And it's back to what we said kind of in the beginning is that there's no, there's no consistency, right? Mm -hmm. There's some yeah, insurance companies right. that are awesome, right? They'll send an adjuster. They leave a check before they even leave. It's awesome. Yeah. That's 2% of the time, <laughs> unfortunately. So what I started to notice was, you know, we are first thing that happens is you call, you either talk to the, the customer and get a claim number or you have to call the agent and then you call the agent and they put you on hold for 10 minutes. Well, thousand dollars an hour, 10 minutes right there. I don't do math, but that's like $150 probably <laughs> $150 on hold right there. Yeah. Gone. Um, so then from there you talk to the adjuster and the adjuster says, okay, well I'll call the client. So then they call you back and then they want, okay, well, can you send me the pictures? In the meantime, you've probably already emailed the pictures to the agent, <laughs> which took another 10 minutes. And so now you're going to have to email them to the adjuster and then you're going to need a claim number. And then that's to hope that they get your stuff done. And it's probably going to be four days later. And they're like, Oh, I actually lost that picture. Can you send that to me or, or whatever the case may be? Right. It's what, always yeah, just something. There's something. It's that. Faster. And there's, there's so many artifacts in there that can be fixed. Like number one, when a customer comes in, comes in with a job, you want to get that fixed right away because one, the obvious is you don't want them to go find someone else to fix it Two. You don't want them to decide they want to live with it. You want to fix it, right? That's your business owner. You want to fix that damage. Um, but three, so you want to get want to get it as fixed as fast as possible. Yep. And then the next thing is you just don't want to have to do all those things, right? You can't really write a process for that, right? Every insurance company is different. So I started to develop a process that does that. We did for myself. I have someone that helps me with it. Um, I write the estimate, I do the damage analysis and I document the pictures and I get the customer's insurance information. And then I get it to this person and they take care of it all for me. And, or, I mean, it's, it's us, but they take care of it all for me. Mm -hmm. And on that, we have come up with ways to do it very efficiently. So I try, my goal is to have our claims either approved or have a plan to get them approved before the phone gets hung up. So like that day. Because I'm not okay with having a claim go six days before I get an email for approval. One, the customer doesn't deserve that. They deserve an answer and they deserve a plan as soon as they come into your shop. That's just, that's what the client deserves. That's just humanity. That's just good ethics. That's just good morals. So that's another aspect that we really focus on is, is getting things done quickly because that's how you run business. That's how you treat clients. It's just, it is. So, okay. So I love that. So we're getting to the, to the, the meat of it here, right. And the idea. So basically, um, like we, we talked a little bit about it before, but we kind of saved it for the podcast. So the idea is your company that you started, I don't actually know the name of it. So you can tell us in a minute. Um, the company that you started is, is I can, I can hire you to handle all that for me. H how, how do I do that? So, so, I, I heard, I, I listened to the PDR coach podcast two weeks from now and I'm like, Oh, that's a great idea. And then a hailstorm hits me and I have customers coming into my shop and I write an estimate. What, what, how do you, how do you play into that? Where do you come in? How do you help? 
um, how do you make my life easier? That's what I, that's a really what I want to know and what my, my guys listening want to know. How do you make my life easier? Absolutely. That's, and that's the, that's the perfect question because that, that is my life motto. Like mm-hmm. I am here to make your life easier. That's it. I'm not trying to make it more complicated. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to make you email more people. I'm here to make your life. So when you go home, when you're done working, you can go home and hug your kids and not be worried about, oh, I got to go send this email. Like that, that tears me apart, right? So my company's, my company's name is Submission Solutions. And we actually, we form a partnership with you guys. So if you have a retail PDR operation or you have a, a body shop, um, we work with everybody. We partner with you. And so we have a system set up so that when you go, whether you go into a hailstorm, so we have, we have a couple of different operations. So you can use us once a week if you want, or you can use us 20 times a day. Mm-hmm. If, if that's your operation. So you can, you can hire us just for one claim or you can hire us for 20 claims a month or a hundred claims a month on a monthly retainer. It's, it's whatever fits your operation. Because again, I'm trying to make things as simple as possible for you guys. So you partner with us and then we just get some communication lines set up and you know, whether you have an estimator that's going to be doing this or you do it yourself or, or whatever it may be. Um, they just have our direct communication information and they write the estimate and we have a checklist that we send you. We have an onboarding package. Um, on this checklist is, you know, obviously the damage analysis, photo documentation, um, insurance information, and then client information, which obviously we have um, user agreements in place and that's completely protected and we've never share any of that, but you share, you give us that information. And from there, we just get it to where it needs to go. So after you write the estimate, the next phone call you're going to be getting is from whoever's making the decision that says, yes, this repair is approved. And where do I send the check or no, this repair isn't repair isn't approved. This is what we, we won't approve. And that's something that we currently don't work with just because of liability. And obviously you're the, you guys are the repair professionals. Mm-hmm. I would never want to make a decision on how you're going to fix a car because mm-hmm. you're the professional. So down the road, something we're working on is being a resource for shops to help them get more things approved. Mm-hmm. But right now, um, you you get us the information as soon as you write the estimate, and then you wipe your hands of it. And we get it to where it needs to go. I do all the contacting of, of the adjuster and the agent and the desk auditor and all that stuff. And I get everything put in place properly, and I get it all sent to them. Um, another thing that we do just kind of as a value add for you guys is I, we personally look over all the estimates to see if there's any obvious things that you've missed because we know that happens, right? You're going to, you're going to, whether it's R and I's that you missed or whether it's, um, you know, aluminum that you missed, right? You didn't hit your 25% on aluminum or it's a glue pole that you missed, you know, whatever that is, you know, we like to look over that. So you don't leave anything on the table because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it's your business. You're trying to, you're trying to maximize your business and feed your family and, and provide for those that work for you. So, so that's how we handle that on the front. You, you write the estimate and the next phone call you're going to get is from the adjuster. That's going to be, yes, this is approved. No, this is not approved. That sounds pretty great then, so far. I'll ask uh, a little go, bit, go a little bit more from there. Um, and then you can, you can go. Yeah. So the next thing that we do is that, like you said a minute ago, we were talking about supplements. Yep. Every company has a different process for supplements. Mm-hmm. And they, as we know, they do that by design. They do it so that it's hard for you. We also take care of the supplements. So let's say you get into a vehicle and whether it's a part that's damaged or whether it's a process that's, you know, not proper, or you want, need more money on damage or whatever it may be in the initial conversation I'm having with an insurance company, I will document the supplementation process. So some insurance companies say, keep working on it, take pictures, send us the bill. Some say absolutely not stop Mm -hmm. and call for approval, Mm -hmm. which is unfortunate that that's their prerogative. So I will get you that process. So you don't have any questions. Yeah. If you can keep working on the car and it's three o'clock in the afternoon and the customer wants a car at five and you find something else, you don't have to say, I'll just eat it. Mm. You just take pictures and you keep going. Yeah. And so what you do from there is you just get me that information, whether it's the pictures or whether it's invoices and I will, I will store it all until you're done with the vehicle. And then I will submit that complete package to the insurance company, um, which is extremely time consuming. Um, and that's something that we're getting better at, but it's something that I really like helping the shops with because I know, I know, I know shops that will eat $500, $800 because they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's, 
bananas to me. Yeah, so everyone has everyone has their own limit, I guess, on <laughs> yeah. the amount, the size of supplement to eat. And it's and again, it's hourly. It's for me, it's the hourly rate. Like if you know, if I can, um, if I know I'm pushing several hundred dollars an hour, and I'm going to stop for 30, 40 minutes to submit an eighty-two dollar supplement, I'm just like. Pfft. You know, it's not worth it. I, I don't run big hailstorms. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a, I do one-off jobs. Um, you know, with my, you know, being in Northern California and stuff like that. But um, so this is something we need to get that. If you were interested in doing this, to have a conversation with you. Something to get set up ahead of time before people start coming to the shop. That's the. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't have to be very long ahead of time. Okay, okay. Um, if if okay. you have some contact with me and we can, you know, decide mm. something you want. I mean, we can be rolling next day. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and the other thing is, I don't, I'm not here to cost the shop any money. Mm -hmm. I'm here to make the shop money. So back to the $800 an hour thing, you know, you, you only pay me when you're using me and whether it's one time use and you're paying per claim or whether it's a monthly retainer and you're paying per month, if you're not repairing cars, you're not paying me, mm -hmm. right? This is not a, a rent where you're paying if you're using the shop or not. This mm -hmm. is a, when you're making money, then you're hiring me. When you're not making money, you're not hiring me. Okay. So let's talk so, about that then. So there's two options yep. to pay you. We got, we can do one-off claims because I can actually see this working pretty well in my business because we've been going down the direction of, of putting people more into insurance claims for those big smash repairs stuff. A lot of stuff nowadays with our new quoting process, the ability for us to fix crazier stuff. Like we get a lot of estimates that are up over a thousand dollars pretty easily. Um, Absolutely. and a lot of customers aren't going to want to pay that out of pocket. And so we try to guide them down insurance process, but then we go down the rabbit holes of trying to, you know, coordinate all that and figure it all out. So two ways, one, we can pay you your company submission solutions, um, on a one-time basis or a retainer. Do you have, do you have numbers worked out for that yet? I do. So the one-time basis is obviously a little bit more, um, more of an investment. So sure. if I, if we're just doing the claim, cause like, again, we're trying to make this easy. So mm -hmm. we will just do the claim or we will do the claim and supplement. If okay. we're just doing the claim, we're $75 per use. If we're at claim and supplement, we're $112 per use. But if you are, if you're in a situation where you're doing even one a day or one every other day, mm -hmm. you know, we have, um, retainer packages for 10 a month, 20 a month, 50 a month which is obviously considerably um, that, you know, the more you use us, the less we are. Yeah. So um, at 10 a month, you know, we're around $990 a month. Um, and then up to whatever you care to use, whether it's $50, you know, we're $2,500 a month, which sounds like a whole lot, but um, $50. So, so let's just say one hour per claim you're saving. Mm -hmm. So 50, you're, we're doing 50 claims through a month. So yeah. you're saving 50 hours. Mm -hmm. I don't have the math on that, but, I mean, I do it's if we're, if we're going to use a thousand dollars, yeah, that's 50 grand. Even if we're going to use $500, that's $25,000. So over the course of a month, you have spent 50 hours less handling these claims. So you have made $25,000 more, mm -hmm. or if you want to spend that time at home with your family, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to use it in the shop, you made $25,000 more and you've only invested $2,500 with us. Right. So, so yeah, so 50 claims, if you save an hour, that's saving 50 hours. Um, basically, so if you do spend 2,500 bucks divided by 50 hours, that is $50 per hour. So if you're billing anything over $50 an hour pushing dents, then it, it can make sense to hire somebody to do this process for you. Pretty absolutely. simple, pretty and, simple math. And even if you're not billing $50, which like I said, I don't know anybody that isn't. I don't know. if you're not. <laughs> The, the frustration that this takes off of that our shop's heads mm -hmm. is, is, is worth mm -hmm. it alone. Um, and then I, I do have one more aspect of what we do. And this isn't yeah. an every time thing, but this is a very new thing to us. And we're getting very good at it is we are getting our shops reimbursed for our use pretty consistently. So insurance companies are actually the ones paying us. And in some cases they're making money off of us. So you are using us as an outsource. We're a contractor to you guys. You know, anytime that you sublet something, you just submit that bill and sometimes a markup. And so that's how we can operate as well. Now there's some companies that direct, that throw a really big fit to that, but there's yeah, a lot sure. of companies that completely understand because it's, it's right. You are not, you are not being reimbursed for all of that time on the phone. And that's not right. There's some shops out there that mm -hmm. are, and I applaud them because that's the right thing to do. 
anything that's involved in repairing a vehicle needs to be compensated for. Interesting. So you're saying we wouldn't even necessarily be paying for it out of pocket. It'd be in addition to the supplement. Yeah. I mean, you would technically be paying out of pocket because the insurance company doesn't pay me, but they reimburse you. Right. 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 Okay. Gotcha. So it's, yeah, technically it's out of pocket. I don't want to, I don't want to like paint this right. magical fairy tale, but, <laughs> and, and that's, again, that's not every time, but it's getting better, more and more consistent. Um, we have some really good documentation and some mm-hmm. case studies and some contract law that we've come up with for that. Um, and just some, some evidence that this is the right thing to do. And it, it cannot be argued with that this is proper. This is something that is required to repair the vehicle. Therefore, it needs to be reimbursed for. Right. So, and, I've, and I've seen a lot of guys, I, I know there's a lot more talks within our industry about people charging storage fees for cars when insurance companies aren't coming back. There's people talking about admin fees to do this, this exact type of stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly the numbers. I think they're probably all over the place. I don't think there's a standard yep. on that at this point in time. Um, and again, I don't run, I don't run big hailstorms, so I'm not, I'm not in that every single day, but, um, it sounds like a pretty, a pretty fascinating solution. And again, like you said, for just, it could be for hailstorms. It could just be for those one-off, those one-off insurance claims. Um, if you're running, if you're running a lot of retail and you're like, okay, I got this claim. I don't want to deal with it. I'll hire 75 bucks or 112 bucks to get that handled. And then you could say, yes, you could say, yes, it's approved. And then we can call the customer and schedule it. Yeah. Sounds pretty cool. Um, and that's the, that's the point. Have you, have you been doing this for a while? Have you, have you had a lot of success in this with PDR shops with body shops? What's the, um, what's your, your experience in that so far? So we actually have found that we're the absolute best fit. Like we're the perfect fit for retail hail operations, Mm -hmm. right? Guys that come into a storm and they want to blast through a pile of cars in three months. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. We're the perfect fit for you because we can like, seriously, if you want to do 10, 20 a day, we can do that for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And (laughs) obviously people that are doing that many months probably have office assistants, but there's so much more those people can be doing, Mm -hmm. right? And we're a fraction of the cost of an assistant or a bookkeeper or anything like that. I mean, it's not even comparable. So we're the absolute best fit for those guys, retail hail guys. Um, And this takes one, this takes one thing off the plate. Cause I know if you have an office person that they're, they're estimating cars, they're moving cars, they're coordinating keys. They're talking to the customer, they're calling people, they're scheduling people, they're saying the car's done They're They're going, trying to go above and beyond for other things, whether it has to be washed or this or whatever. So there's a million things to do. And then also on top of that, calling insurance companies, I'm sure. I don't know if there's people running big storms that have someone dedicated to specifically just calling insurance companies. I don't know if people are, uh, you know, in those situations, I've been hit big hailstorms, but sorry to interrupt you there, but that's uh, no, no. Okay, good. And then next we're, we're really good fits for, um, small to medium sized body shops, really big body shops have really big office staffs. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to come in and say, no, we're perfect for everyone. Fire your staff. Small to medium sized body shops. We're perfect for right up Mm -hmm. to 15 employees, 15 techs. I've found that we're kind of the perfect fit for them as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And then not to be left off the list at all is guys that are running retail, but it's not necessarily hail. So stuff like what you do, Um, is is absolutely qualified. Some people do more, some people do less because a lot of stuff that you do is out of pocket, right? And that's Mm -hmm. between you and the customer. But more and more as stuff gets more complex, as your job gets more complex. And I've listened to the question that you asked uh, your other guests about where do you see the industry going? And some of them have some good answers. Some of them are not quite as positive. They're Um, all, they're all good answers. It's all opinion, right? (laughs) Yeah. Positive. yeah. Yeah. I personally see you know, obviously we're not going anywhere and, and some of your, some of your, there's concerns obviously with carbon fiber and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I mm-hmm. think that's so far down the road, yeah. it's out of our lifetime. Right. Um, I don't see a time where insurance won't be involved with repairing a crater on a door, mm-hmm. right. Or a, a soccer ball to the hatch, right. Mm-hmm. Or your kid jumped on the hood because they didn't understand that it could damage your hood <laughs> or whatever it may be like stuff is just going to continue to be more complex and mm-hmm. therefore the skill has to increase. And therefore the re- the compensation has to increase. And unless there's some massive changes in the, in the automotive insurance market where they take deductibles to 10 grand or five grand, which is entirely possible. I don't think it'll happen anytime mm-hmm. soon, but it's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, there will never be a time where insurance is not involved in 
a, some extent of what you do. Mm -hmm. So for, for guys like you, if, if you're doing, if one, one client a week turns in a claim to insurance, we're perfect, right? Yeah. We can do one a week for you. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden you have three that come in in a day, even better, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So we, the only, the better question here is who are we not good fits for? That was my next and, question is like, <laughs> let's hear the, let's hear where, where the guy's listening that this doesn't work very well. It sounds, it sounds great. And, and I'm, and I'm racking my brain to, I'm trying to think if I'm listening to the podcast and guys are like, Corey, ask him, ask him, ask him this. I'm trying to find ways to, to, you know, I don't want to say tear it down, but find ways why it no, doesn't work. So yeah. Who, who doesn't it work for? Who's this not work for? So I actually have some really good questions. Like I can answer just for you, for what people are asking, like, you sure. know, where's the catch? We don't work great for people that do 100% wholesale. And if you do 100% wholesale and you're not handling the claim at all, you're just coming in on a team of 20 techs. You're just pushing dents and going home. They're giving you some cash. Yeah. We're not a fit for you. Yeah. Um, we can, however, work for who you're working for. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you bring us to who you're working for, number one, I love to pay referrals. And number two, they are going to love you. Right. If you can bring these guys a solution to help them, they, mm -hmm. that's just looks good on you. So the other the other thing, some of the other questions that people are probably, yeah. So that's who we don't work perfect for is wholesale guys or extremely large body shops, right? Yeah, MSOs, staff, um, yeah, yeah. calibers, stuff like that. Sure. Um, some of the questions that I get a little bit that people are probably like, ask this is too good to be true is we, we don't work for absolutely every claim. There's some claims out there that um, they want you to direct upload it from CCC, which is awesome. Um, or they'll send an adjuster, which is again, awesome. Um, as long as you know that adjuster is leaving you with a check and they're not making you jump through a bunch of hoops. Mm -hmm. If they are, give me a call because I can help you with that too. Yeah. But um, those claims we don't work awesome for because you don't really need us. The, the adjuster comes, they write the estimate, they leave you the check. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how that works. Um, so those are kind of instances where you know we're not necessarily a perfect fit for. So we're not 100% of your claims going to be taken care of. So basically, it's a process. So so I customer comes in i'm gonna use my mobile tech rx because that's what i use i don't use ccc or anything I don't, I don't run a retail shop or anything yeah so write a mobile tech rx um i use precedent comes out to you know 1480 bucks or whatever and you know i talk to the customer hey here's the options you know we can run through insurance etc um, to have that entire conversation send a picture so now the customer has an estimate in their email um, from us with a picture with a price breakdown. It's an 18 inch dent with these are the factors. We're going to R and I this or R and I that. Okay. So they, they leave and then I, or, or maybe they don't. Well, let's, let's, yeah, cause I'm a mobile person. So they leave and then I, they say they want to make an insurance claim. I forward you that, that mobile tech RX estimate. Yep. So and right at the end. So that's it. A reason we love mobile tech. So yeah. Um, mobile tech stance is, at the end of it, you know, you enter the email addresses. They say, yeah. just enter the adjuster's email address. Like, that's awesome on paper. Yeah. That, that concept doesn't work that often, right? Because they're, they're like, okay, what's this? Or, you know, they want you mm -hmm. to send it somewhere else. And then yeah. you're, you're jumping through hoops. Sure. So it's super simple. Drop my email address, Andrew at submissionsolutions.com, right there in the email. Easy as that. So that's, that's why we love mobile tech is because it mm -hmm. makes what we, makes our end of it super awesome. streamlined. Because everything's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Right. Yeah. If you, if, if you're not using, or if someone doesn't use mobile tech, which is a ton of people and you know, you have pictures on your phone and you email them to yourself or mm -hmm. text them to yourself or whatever, that's perfect too. You email us the claim, whether you fax it off your phone or scan it off your phone or whatever you want yeah. to do. Yeah. All you have to do is email it to us. We just put it together in a nice little per, per, or cute package that makes people feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes it look like, you know, we really care I mean, because we do like, we make it look like we, yeah, put things together properly because we want it done the first time on time, every time. And so with mobile tech it makes it awesome. You just send us the email, put my email right in the, in mm -hmm. the, and yeah, in the, the last step right it. there. And it's, and it's easy as that. So we tell the, we tell the customer like, okay, here's this, you can make an insurance claim. They leave, we send you an email. The customer hasn't made an insurance claim. And again, we can talk about, you know, capturing the vehicle right then and there or whatever. That's a separate conversation, but customer goes or we drive mobile, we do it, customer leaves, whatever. We send you the estimate. The customer still needs to make an insurance claim before you can do anything, correct? Are you following up with that customer with the customer information on there to say, hey, here's how you make an insurance claim. All I need is the number. And then after that, you're good. So all I have to do is write an estimate. All the customer has to do is give submissions to solutions. 
because they have to make it or can you make the insurance claim for them or do they have to make the insurance claim right so i yeah. got a lot of so questions the, <laughs> yeah no that's awesome uh, those yeah. are really good questions okay. so the, the customer has to make the insurance claim right. obviously they and that's do it, that's yeah. down to they're the one with the contract with the insurance company correct yeah there's some shops that'll do that for you i, I don't agree with that i think that okay. that's i didn't think so. shops boundaries yeah. but so we we absolutely can help them though so okay. if if exactly what you said it's, they're like yeah i'll just quick pay for it then they get home and they're like oh wow it's a fourteen hundred dollar dent mm -hmm. they're like okay i better turn it in um I, we can absolutely give them a call and uh, mm -hmm. walk them through that process. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we love doing that because it's, it's, it's super Makes simple it simple, and yeah. it's something that you know, so then, I, we so have then, really good personal touch because I, I've grown up in that industry, right? We have a small, small community. So everything we do has a really strong community sense to it, right? We're not here. We're not robots. I don't have a foreign accent. Mm -hmm. Like we're not here to, Nobody on our team had the four accent. I we guess. got a virtual, not here to... a virtual assistant from, from pick exactly. the country. <laughs> which was nothing against virtual assistants no, at all, but I just not. like that personal feel, right? I just love, I love being right. be able to connect, being relatable, being personable. So, Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, basically write the claim or write the estimate, tell them to make a claim. You handle it. You call us that day. That's the goal is that day. We make the claim at 10 AM by that day. Maybe the next day you say, okay, insurance has said yes to this or no to this. Um, yep. And if you say yes, then you call, you know, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Customer back and say, okay, insurance claim is accepted. Um, it cost us 75 bucks and all we did was write the estimate and do nothing else or 112 if we want supplement. So it cost a hundred bucks. Um, we went went about the rest of our day, did what we needed to do. We got a call from Submission Solutions later saying, oh, the insurance claim is approved. Um, you can call them up and um make the you know set the appointment it's 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 that easy absolutely so i, I do want to correct one thing because i love i i'm all about transparency yeah, yeah, um, i'm not sure. trying to mislead anybody Please. um the the call we don't actually ha handle anything to do with the approval or disapproval so you'll get the call from the insurance company right okay, okay. we just do sure. we, we're doing the communications mm -hmm. so and the handling and the filing so okay. You will get that that um, communication from the insurance company, but everything else you said was was dead on. Okay, gotcha. Um, well, that's cool, man. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna right after this, I'm probably gonna pick up the phone, call a couple of people, and now that I know so much more about this and and run it by them, but I think it's a great idea. If if we're interested in knowing more, I guess like signing up somehow so that if we did have a claim, we could give you a shot. Uh, what do we What do we do? Go to your website, I'm guessing, obviously. Yeah, you can go to my website, um, submissionsolutions.com. Or yeah. the other thing is, and this just kind of, I said, I love being transparent and I'm very personable. I will just give you my personal cell phone number. My cell yeah. phone number is 605-228-1233. So 605-228-1233. And just give me a call anytime or shoot me a text. Like yeah. we're here to help you. We're here to make your life as simple as possible. And I've just always loved when business owners will say, here's my personal cell phone number. Yeah, you know, if you sure. ever have a problem, call me, you know, and that's what I'm all about. If you ever have a problem, call me. If you're interested, call me. If you have any questions, call me. Yeah. So that's the best way to get a hold of me is just on my website. Um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn and all that type of stuff too. Just Andrew Weber, but best ways are just my website or just shoot me a text or give me a call. You know, I'm here to, I'm here to help. I'm here to make your guys' life as simple as possible. Awesome, man. Well, I'm excited we connected. I'm excited to be in Arte with you. Uh, that's a great place to be. This is why I'm in Arte, so I can meet people like this. Obviously, joining, I had no idea that I'd be able to find somebody who could bring potentially this much value to my listeners, to our industry. It sounds like a great solution for a lot of you that that have that struggle with. Like, <laughs> there's There's times where I'm just like... I don't know if I want to lead this customer down the insurance route. I'd rather them just pay the 1200 bucks for this, for this job because I don't really want to deal with all that, to be honest. And I'm, I'm a mobile, I'm a mobile person. So like staying organized in my truck and knowing who to call back and when to call, it's, it's not something that I look forward to doing. Let's just say that. And like I said, talked about last week with Matt Moore, implementing systems, writing down on a piece of paper, everything you do during the week, and then crossing off those things that you don't want to do. This is high on the list for me, for sure. Dealing with insurance companies to try to get, to try to get a customer taken care of. Like that's not something that I love to do. So this may be a great solution um, for me and hopefully for a lot of others. So, I mean, I appreciate you coming on and sharing that. And hopefully a lot of guys got some value from this. Absolutely. And uh, one last thing, um, yep. just 
because, you know, like I said, I'm here to provide value and I'm yep. eternally grateful that I, you know, I've met you and for all the value you provide yep. for anybody that, that is interested. If you give me a call and you just tell me you heard this on Corey's, on Corey's podcast, the PDR coach podcast, we will do everything for the first month half off. So any claims you want to do the first month, we'll do it half off. Just tell me, you, you know, you heard about us on, on the PDR coach podcast and any claims, any monthly retainers first month half off. Wow. I did not know you were going to do that. That's really cool, man. I appreciate that. Um, check it out guys. I'm, 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 we had this conversation before and I brought you on the podcast, not fully knowing everything and intending to ask you tough questions to try to see, you know, where this was difficult. But I mean, I don't see a reason why I'm not going to, you know, get started, go to the website and then at least you have you on backup, you know, for me, no, like the one-off and- things like, Hey, Hey, I don't want to do this. Can you do this for me? Thanks. <laughs> Bye. And we're, yeah, like, like I said, we're here for that too. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love it. I appreciate you coming on and um, hopefully we can um, have another chat soon. Absolutely, man. All right. Thanks.